Hi, this is Eric. I always want you to use the Wi-Fi of the ESP32 dynamically. Instead of the static SSID and password, I want to let you just allow to select Wi-Fi they want via graphing interface. Uh, in this video, I'm making a simple version of the GUI with RVGR to empower the user to select the Wi-Fi connection freely. Uh, this video is the first part of the two. Uh, in this section, we will look at the hardware wiring, display setting, and simple example of LVGL. If you don't need this part, just skip to the next one. Uh, please refer to the link below for the completed project source code. Uh, let's begin. Okay, uh, this is how I wired them. A detailed description of the wiring was given in part 0 of the previous note project. Uh, if you need this, please refer to this video. Uh, I'm using the same ESP32 and the same Display iRi 9488 with touch module. Uh, let's save our time. I will create an application with combination of TFT ESPI and RVGL for Arduino. It's the simplest way. One thing I want to say is this is not a mandatory. You can use ESP IDF and RVGL too. The first thing to do is to install the TFT SPI library. This is a graphic driver for display output. After installation, open the user setup header file and set the display. You can find the user setup header file from your TFT SPI folder under the Arduino library folder. I'm using the IRI 9488 display so I choose this. and set the pin as I have wired it. Finally, set SPI clock frequency to 40 MHz. Unfortunately, at 88 MHz, graphics don't print properly. Display setup is done. Uh, pretty simple, right? Uh, let's see if the display is working properly. I'm gonna use the one of the example source code from TFT SPI. You can use anything for testing graphics. There are lots of good display examples. I'll just try one of them. I'm just changing the seeder speed and nothing changes. On red build them check. Uh, the display is working properly. A uh, drawing speed is pretty fast. Now we confirm the displaying has no problem. Now it's time to move on to the next step and check the display touch. TFT ESPI also contains an example for calibrating the touch. Let's use this. In this example, if the calibration file is not in the file system, proceed with the calibration. If there is a calibration data file, then read the data to set the touch. Include the SPI FFS head file to use SPI FFS on ESP32. In this project, uh, my display will work on the portrait mode, so let me change it. Uh, 0 and 2 is for portrait mode, and 1 and 3 is for render scheme mode. Uh, I modify if statement here to format the SPI FFS. Uh, it saves the calibration value as a file, but I print it as a value and keep it separately. It's a convenient to use intuitively. Uh, let's proceed with uh, display calibration. Due to formatting file system, it takes a time a little bit here. Uh, after finishing it, uh, you can see the four red small rectangles on each corner of the display. Touch the diagonal lines in the square in order. Uh, as soon as it's done, you can see the calibration values on the serial console. Uh, let me keep it. This display setting including touch module is done. It's time to take a look at RVGR Arduino. This library is easy to use because it's ported for Arduino. If you don't have it yet, please install it first. Uh, go to the example in LVGR Arduino. Let's open the ESP32 TFT ESPI slider. This example consists of four files. In the ESP32 TFT ESPI slider file, 
The necessary variables are defined like display, touch, and LVGL object, which is a slider widget. The callback file uh, defines a callback function that is called when a particular event occurs. The slider event is called every time you move the slider. Uh, in the loop file, the Arduino default function loop is defined. To continue drawing the GUI, you must continue to invoke LV task handler. In the setup file, everything is initialized and widgets are displayed on the screen using LVGL. Let's modify this project to fit my display. Uh, change the resolution first. It's in the portrait mode, so it's 320 for width and 480 for height. Uh, navigate to the setup file and change the orientation of display. Uh, as I did in calibration touch, it should be 2, not 3. Uh, finally, change the touch calibration value to the one I got earlier. Uh, we are all set. Let's run it and check the result. Uh, it says, Hello Arduino version 7. Uh, you can read the touch events on the console. It looks pretty fast and accurate. Uh, you can easily change the value using the slider. Good. Uh, I like the application based on GUI because it's easier to use and more fun. I believe GUI simplifies complex systems. Uh, many things have changed in LVGL version 7. Since my previous project, Simple Note App was uh, made with LVGL version 6, it requires modification to work fine. That's all for today's video. In the next section, I will show you how to configure GUI with LVGL and make the network task based on FreeRTOS. It's gonna be interesting. Stay tuned.